time to call this May 10th budget workshop special call of board meeting. This Monday, May 10th, 2021. Order. Uh, first of all, Tuesday. Oh, sorry. Tuesday. It was supposed to have been on Monday, but Tuesday. It's a bad one. Okay. Well, with that being said, um, I will ask for Ms. Gonzalez to call roll. Present. Mr. Uh, Present. Mr. Mr. Here. Mr. Mesa? Here. Mr. Overfeld? Present. Mr. Smith? Present. Mr. Smith? Present. And myself, we're here, we have one. Let the record show that we do have a form of board members, and that this meeting will duly call in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. This time we will have opening ceremonies, first with a moment of silence for personal reflection on the graduations. Please stand. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. So we'll start first with the workshop. And uh, this is the general fund budget workshop. Does I need to slides and then I'm going to turn it over to Amy and she'll present from where, where she's sitting. Uh, but today we're going to just give you an introduction to the budget, talk about some budget projections, um, both our revenue and our expenditures, and then uh, share our budget calendar uh, with y'all for the next few meetings. So what, was, what we had to talk about that, that is just, we kind, of, we kind of have to get our arms around and just say, okay, we understand this is going to be a little bit different. But right now, because of COVID, the ADA that we're probably going to have this coming year is not reflected in the budget right now. So why is it not reflected? Because we don't have those students enrolled. So although the whole state expects for their enrollment to increase, we can't plan a budget uh, for 10,400 students when we only have 9,800. So our budget planning has to be a somewhat conservative. Uh, however, we do believe that the enrollment is going to grow. So what does that mean? It means that on paper, we're going to have a budget deficit because our expenses are primarily the same, yet the ADA that we're projecting has to be conservative because we don't have the students right now. So we're projecting a budget deficit. It's also a legislative year. So until the legislature meets and votes on the budget, you know, we won't be able to make the appropriate adjustments. So those are some of our limitations, but they are there are some opportunities where we can overcome some of these limitations. For example, by us starting the budget early this year, it creates a fund balance or an excess fund balance from what we're required to take. So we can use some of that fund balance to more appropriately plan. A big piece is going to be the extra three funds. This morning, they put out some information that both uh, the Children's and the Sedanas participated and the information that they shared with us, in the past, we knew that we could use ESSER 3 funds to do things like improve loss of learning, uh, improve the air quality. But after today's meeting, these people are telling us, hey, you can use some of this money to reimburse the district for the return to work stipend that we approved last year. Because it was a return to work stipend, we can claim it under ESSER 3 and take some of that $25 million to, to reimburse the district the $880,000 we spent. We can pay for all of summer school. If we want to hire librarians, we can pay for those librarians. Uh, remember that right now we have uh, uh, aides in, in, in the elementary uh, libraries. The raise for this coming year, the insurance for this coming year, all these things could possibly be covered in the SR3. 
But these are opportunities because they haven't realized yet. It'll be maybe uh, September before we're able to count that money. Uh, of course, we expect increased enrollment. And there are some certain project source funding that Mr. Henge, when he presents, he'll talk about the insurance that we're receiving, some reimbursements from the Texas Department of Agriculture to buy some equipment. So there, there's other project source funding that's going to help us out. So what are the next steps? As we go through the, through the budget, we know we're going to have to borrow from that excess fund balance. But after Amy presents the picture, we'll see that we're borrowing just while these other monies realize themselves. Um, and, and then every, you know, we give, we'll give budget updates maybe every three months to say, okay, now the budget is this, so now there's, it's, it's more fund balance. So now the budget is this three months later, and then we're going to be okay. So the outlook for the budget is very favorable. It's just we have to understand our limitations and know that it's going to be a while before all the money falls into place. Uh, but that's where we're at, so I'm going to turn it back over to Ms. Childress, and then she's going to take us a little bit at a time. Yes, questions sir. on the, the budget. We're still being allocated what was funded last year. The, we're getting uh, what they call the whole harmless. Um, but the projections for this coming year, for this coming year, it's not based on whole harmless, it's, it's based on projected ADA. Now for the current year, it, it is all on the whole harmless. But it's not going to be the money that we expected to have two years ago because we don't have that enrollment right now. So it, it is going to be significantly lower for now. Now once the students come back, then we project a higher uh, um, safe system based on the higher student enrollment, but, but we don't have those right now. Okay, so it's, if it's totally harmless for this year. Yes, sir. Isn't this based for the following year? No, sir. For, for this coming school year, the 2122 uh, school year? Mm -hmm. No, sir, the whole harmless was for this current school year. So for the 2122, it's just based off the state funding tables. Uh, and so it's based on, we're back to basing it on ADA. So if we track those students that are missing, that never showed up? Yes, yes, sir. But we know who didn't show up. And remember, a big part of it was our pre-K students that didn't show up. So we expect all of them to come back for kindergarten this year. Plus, also, we track uh, birth rates. Uh, so the birth rates, they're supposed to be school age this coming year. So we do expect to have a significantly higher kindergarten enrollment, but we can't budget for it yet until they actually show up. Yes, sir. On that, yes, sir. do we have a clarification of what it can be used for? Reimbursement, facilities? I mean, is it yes, sir. The, the meeting that we, earlier we believed that it could only be used for certain things, but after, uh, like for example, the air quality, uh, or, or loss of learning like for summer school. But after today's meeting, they gave us a whole broad array of items that we could use it for, like I said, to include all the plexiglass that we bought for last year, anything that wasn't uh, reimbursed by SR1 or SR2, the return to work stipend, even possibly uh, the raise for this coming year. Now, we're still gonna be conservative on the raise because when the extra funds are, are gone, the school district owns that cost moving forward, but we don't have to be that conservative, uh, especially when we talk about our insurance fund here in, in a minute. You ready, Ms. Ames? I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. <laughs> They're both Ames. <laughs> okay, let me go on. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is our first budget workshop for the 21 22 school year, and uh, as Dr. Rios mentioned, it it's going to continuously change, and we will update you as we can. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. So the first item we're going to go over is our revenue. And we start with our local revenue, which is our, the majority is our tax collections. So our m and tax rate for the 2020-21 was 0.9927. We have received our preliminary tax values for uh, to use for 21-22, and they went up about 5.6%. Uh, 
much better than, well, I say much better. Last year, they went up about 11 or 12 percent. So as you know, the state is compressing our tax rate. So we will still be compressed, but not near as much as we were last year. So that leaves us at this time, for calculation purposes, we're using an MNO tax rate of 0 0.9701. So we're estimating $23,216,812 in local revenue at this time. And state revenue, which is our uh, foundation program, um, and as uh, Mr. Mason was asking and Dr. Rios was mentioning, when we originally projected uh, our budget for 2021, we used an APA of 9477 are revised for this year with the whole harmless, our ADA that we're being allowed to use is 9,370. For the 21-22 projection, we are using our ADA that is our actual right now, which is 8,980. So you can see in our ADA, we, go from, we went from 9,400 to 8,900 for 21-22. So we're estimating at this time in state revenue, $70,488,356. Right. And then the last quarter category on our revenue is our federal. This is where we uh, have our indirect cost revenue, our SHARS, impact aid, uh, and then our miscellaneous federal. And as you can see, it's pretty much staying the same. Um, it's a, a little over $1.3 million for 21-22 also. The next category we have is our expenditures. And just also so you'll know, um, at the end we will, I do have the interactive workbook again for you. So we will be going over that after this uh, recap. And uh, we will be emailing that to each of you in the morning after we review it. So the first item we have is our TASB salary study. Of course, 80% of our budget is salaries. And uh, Ms. Luz from TASB did come down in April and did, uh, present uh, three models for us. And these are the same three models she presented at, at that time. It was a 2%, a 3%, and a 4% um, general pay increase to the midpoint. Um, the only changes that we have on this that we have made at this time is that due to our um, self-funded insurance funds unfortunately decreasing quite rapidly we know the district is going to need to make an additional contribution to our um, to our portion of the insurance fund and so at this time we have set aside 1.4 million dollars in order to do that and that um, equates to $42.85 per employee per pay period, or about $1,000.28 per year. It would be the increase in each employee's, in, the, the contribution to each employee's insurance fund. At this time, administration is recommending uh, Model B, which would be the 3% increase with the additional cost of the insurance contribution, it actually brings it up to an actual 5.9% increase, which would be the 3% general pay increase to the midpoint plus the insurance contribution. Now, um, originally, the administration wanted to, we were recommending the 4% increase, but due to the insurance contribution, we are doing the 3% plus the insurance our recommendation at this time. Mr. Mesa, yes. may I ask a question, sure. clarifying question? On the previous slide that had the salary study, yes. on, on my printout, uh, the 4% increase, uh, it drops from 49.650 to 48.250. So what would the actual 4% have been? For, for teachers, it says under the 4% increase, starting pay would be 48,250, which is backwards from the other two. Okay, I'll have to. I'll we were gonna, we were gonna break 50,000, right? What if we had gone 4%? I'll have to clarify that. I'll have to go back and pull the base up. Right now, when Mr. 
Hengi presents, she'll, she'll go clarify that and come right back. Thanks for that clarification. Okay. Did we have the same problem last year? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check with her and see if she did. <coughs> yes, with that three per yes, with the uh, recommend the three percent recommendation, that would put this uh, teacher starting salary at forty nine six fifty. Uh, teachers would receive the three percent general pay increase, and then administrative, professional, paras, and auxiliary would all receive a three percent uh, their midpoint increase, and then the um, forty two dollars and eighty five cents per paycheck of the insurance contribution. This is just a little recap on our health insurance fund. So the annual contribution per employee was increased from $5,916.96 in 2019-20 to the $6,696.96, which was a $32.50 per employee per pay period for 2021. Our self-funded insurance plan does start it's a calendar year, so it does start January 1st of 2022. However, the contribution will start July 1st with our new, with our new year. And some considerations on our health fund is that we would like to continue to offer the option of a no-cost insurance plan to our employees. And then for the 21-22 year increase, again, our district contribution of the $42.85 per employee per pay period which would make the annual contribution per employee to $7,725.36 for the 2021-22 year. And then as always, we, uh, have, we would like to implement the wellness rate program in order to incentivize wellness participation. <clears throat> the next slide, and this will be in your interactive workbook, are some position conversions or reductions um, that have been brought uh, to administration. At this time, we have everything, uh, all items except for the first two set to no, because we do at this time have a deficit budget. Uh, we will want y'all to go in and tell us what positions you think, and as, um, of course, anything that you change to yes will mean that we will have to go back into our other departments areas and make changes, reductions, um, the first two we do, uh, the two CTE teachers, we do have marked yes because we have two teachers that are split funded at the high school and the middle schools and they're moving strictly to high school, so we will have to replace them at the middle schools. Um, the other items at this time are marked to no, but it does bring, it would be an addition of $950,000 if we were to hire all of them at this time. Can I just, uh, uh, I want to reiterate the same point I, 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 made, I made earlier. So, because we have a deficit budget, you know, we're saying no on, on these budgets, but us saying no is just for today. So, for example, uh, like in the past, we, uh, we've always talked you know, about the librarians. So, if y'all say yes to the librarians, then, then I know that we have to go in and uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, seven, about $400,000. I have to go reduce the budget by $400,000 from some of my departments. But then let's say that I say, okay, well, I'm going to reduce operations by $400,000 to pay for the, for the libraries. So I'll take less as uh, technology money away. But I'm taking it away knowing that I'm going to be able to provide for those technology needs with the ESSER funds. So then we'll, we'll, over the next uh, uh, two to three weeks, we'll study what we can trade out as more information is coming out so that we can be able to provide the, the, the best budget approach that meets the needs of the students and still maintains the, 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 the solvency of, 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 our, our, of our budget. So that, that's, that's what I mean about, you know, it's gonna take a little give and take, but, but it's definitely doable, okay? Sorry. Okay. Right. Going to the, the next slide, here. These are our non-salaried expenditures that we have at this time. Of course, we have our um, campus allocations, which is $1.1 million, our departments, operations, state programs, student programs, and then we have our debt payments, our ESCO payment, and then our bond fund payments. 
And then we also have our sustainability plan, which um, Mr. Hange is going to go over here shortly with you. Again, at this time, we have most of those items marked at no. Again, just for budgeting, planning purposes at this time, as y'all go in and tell us which projects you would maybe like to see funded on your interactive workbook, and then we will go in and make changes to other departments as needed. So, as a recap, we are showing, um, at this time, we are showing a um, revenue of 95 million, $98,168. And our expenditures at this time, we are showing $100,727,442. But this time we do have a budget deficit of a little over $5.6 million that we will be working on and adjusting. Going forward, just as a reminder, um, we have this workshop today, and then of course we have, we have our regular board meeting on the 17th, and then we have a um, second review of the budget on the 24th, and then our meetings in July were scheduled on, I'm sorry, June 7th is our special call to do the proposed budget and the approval of the compensation package. The 21st will be the public hearing to. To adopt uh, this year, we will only be in, be adopting the budget first because we are doing a short fiscal year. We will come back in August to do the tax rate. So we will this will be one of those years that we adopt our budget without a tax rate. So we'll come back in August and do that. And then we have on the twenty eighth our final amendments for the twenty twenty. so that if, uh, if uh, you're not back with uh, the correction, mm -hmm. uh, I can present the budget workbook after Mr. Hanke. Yes, yes, yes. Is, is that, that, that makes sense? Okay. Right. Uh, are there any questions before we? I don't know. I have one. Question myself. Sure. Uh, on, on state funding for 5831 TRS on behalf, uh, there, there was a bill going through. I don't know if it, if it already passed in the House and the Senate, but there was one where they were going to change it for any new employee hired TRS that it was going to hang into a different style system. Like right now, it's the TRS that we know, uh, and then new employees were going were going to go into like a four hundred one k style. There, so is is our in a are our contributions going to remain the same under that one, or have we looked at that piece of legislation to see how it would affect? Yeah, no, no, sir. I, I'd have to go study a little bit more in depth. But uh, again, until until the budget's approved, and, and I don't think that one's been approved because I haven't I haven't heard mm -hmm. uh, that it's been approved both houses. Yeah, there, there's a couple of bills that are pending. One is to opt out of TRS care, and and the other one is. Um, you know, of course, not contributing to TRS, but there's one before the other one, so they're up in the air. They're not, they've been voted on yet. Okay, we'll study it for sure. Good deal. Right. Some, some districts in, in, in El Paso, I don't know if you kept up with that. TRS is real expensive, TRS care. And so it already started, the movement already started in El Paso where they're not going to TRS care. They just popped it out and TRS didn't say anything. So now some attorneys of their local board are saying, you know what, if they did it, we want to do it too. Mm -hmm. And now a bill has been introduced. So, but it's still up in the air. It's, it's not been put on. More reason to go to the SLI. Hmm? More reason to go to the SLI. <laughs> I, more okay. I do know one of the TRS rates was set to, was set to increase this year. They have not put it out yet, so I don't know. Maybe because it's a legislative year, maybe they, they're holding off. But I do know there will be an increase. I believe it's on the employee side this year. Yeah. So I believe the employer side went up two years ago. So I do believe the employee side will be going up this year.
be a post legislative session at SLI. Good evening, President Lesson, Dr. Rios, members of the board. Uh, the portion that I'll be uh, speaking towards is the sustainability plan. Like every year around this time, we go through the needs of the district from a facilities and technology perspective and just bring some ideas forward or potential uh, projects. Obviously, uh, funding will be a uh, concern on this year's projections, but um, what, what we've done at this point is the, uh, this first slide here, and everyone should have a print out on it, is the sustainability dashboard, where it's a summary of all the items that we look at every school year, um, ranging from heating and air conditioning, uh, heating and air conditioning, athletics, campus furniture, asphalt, uh, painting project, both interior and exterior, technology, service vehicles, food service, and this year with uh, recovering from our hail damage that we had back in April, uh, we do have some rough repairs. Um, and the projected budget that we're looking at right now for needs is $1,652,000. $5.12. Um, under the heating and air conditioning plan, starting last year, we implemented a maintenance agreement both with Amistad and Train. And by doing that, what we, what we did is we took our internal staff and gave them portions of the district that they're successful in being able to support. Um, we do have train equipment throughout the district that our guys Typically, we have call train anyway, so we entered into an agreement because it's a proprietary system. Our guys are real limited on what they can do to fix that. Um, that is a local resource that we use, so we also gave them some campuses. In doing that, um, I did pull a historical ticket tracking, and in 2018-19, we were uh, roughly 1,710 service tickets within one year. And in 2020-2021, those tickets went down to 278. So this is also a combination of the ESCO project that was completed. So it's been a combination of projects working together to get the heating and air conditioning where we feel that it's, it's easier to manage at this point. Ultimately, it's provided a better environment at the locations for everyone. So we would like to keep those maintenance agreements in place for another year. At this point, they are looking to be moved over to the general budget and taking them out of the sustainability because we think they're that important for the district. Um, costs will remain the same. They total $604,000, but again, they'll be in the general budget for this upcoming year. Um, athletics, as you're aware, we are in the process of replacing the uh, track at Rand Stadium, and we do have an active um, project or bid right now for replacing the turf in the upcoming year at $322,698. Um, that's the only item that we would like to move forward with this upcoming year if, if possible. Um, the, the turf is definitely getting it and like we've been talking about that for some time now. Um, we're getting to the point where we need to do that. There's not enough time in the summer so we we're fine with being able to defer that out, but um, that's definitely a project that needs to get some traction in the upcoming school year if possible. Uh, furniture, here's one example of a student desk out at Chavita. The laminate is falling apart on the top of it. Um, for the last two years, we've, we've really not put any um, efforts, well not efforts, but energy I should say, into the, uh, the classroom furniture. Uh, with COVID, a lot of students were remote, so we were able to get by with this last school year, but now going into a new school year where we hope to increase those staff or those student counts, we need to um, start budgeting for that accordingly. The student desk, are, we're looking at about 200 of them. That comes around $20,000, and the matching chairs would be another 10,000, which would give us our 30,000 asking budget. Uh, asphalt, Del Rio Freshman um, is in need of, of asphalt. Here's one picture of outside the main office area 
where you can see that it is starting to deteriorate with all the cracking. Um, this is the cafeteria area where it's already gone from the cracking stage to the pothole stage. Um, so we would like to uh, possibly have that for consideration at $93,696 of what we're projecting on that one. Uh, interior paint project. Last year, if you recall, we did take out the interior and exterior painting project. Um, with uh, changes in workflow, we had a lot more staff that we were able to put out there and get some painting done. So we did still do painting. We just didn't do it. We didn't do it through the contracted services. Uh, so efforts of the maintenance department, they did paint all the halls at Del Rio Middle School. Um, they also painted the interior at Buena Vista and the file retention slash soon to be special education building. Uh, behind churches, the old Cosmo building. Um, so that interior painting still happened. We just did it with internal staff. Some bus drivers helped out when we didn't have the, the large, um, you know, pounds there for the students. Uh, for this upcoming year for interior, we are looking at um, interior for Garfield and Lamar. Most projected costs based on square footage and historical costs. That would be two hundred eight thousand three hundred ninety-two dollars, and then um, there's a couple photos on the sides that just kind of simulate what what some of these areas look like. Um, so we have Garfield and Lamar there, and then on the exterior, we would be recommending Buena Vista and Lamar, and again based on those costs and paintable surfaces, that would be one hundred six thousand ninety-eight dollars. Our maintenance department did do the exterior building, uh, the old cosmetology, because we're hoping to be moving a uh, special ed in there this summer before school starts up. So they'll be moving from Annex 1 over. That's going to renovations right now. And then we also did the exterior of the old Austin campus to kind of bring that back a little bit. Um, so again, we, we were able to apply where we could and still be able to move forward on that project, but now we want to try and get some energy back into getting contract and services back in if at all possible. Um, the technology plan. Um, so the two items that I felt were most critical for this upcoming budget year is the virtual environment for hardware and software licenses. And I did put a description over here just as you're going through your workbook and you need some type of reference to see what type of impact it would have, you're aware. The uh, virtual environment currently supports a thousand desktops. They're located in our computer labs. Um, every campus right now has a computer lab of regular computers and a computer lab of thin clients or the terminals. I'm sure you've heard. Um, we do that for redundancy, so if one system goes down, the other one still works, and we don't lose that time for online testing. So that, that's kind of the recipe that we came up with. However, we've made our last payment on virtualization, so going into this year, if we don't invest in that, we can expect those services to um, go away at some point. Uh, we won't get any more upgrades, we won't get support on them, and some type of change would have to be made basically pulling the terminals out and replacing those with computers. Kind of going backwards from where we started from. The uh, district printing runs on there, wireless infrastructure, the cybersecurity vault that we keep all of our district backups, all of that runs on our virtualization, as well as we have 65 application servers that run on the map. Now this 300,000, uh, how we were able to originally fund this was through a Dell Financial lease, and the payments were around $300,000 a year for, I believe, a five-year commitment. So all in, it's about a million and a half dollar investment for the next five years. But in order to be able to support that long term, we broke it up into leases. Um, that's how we got it over the last five. So that would be my recommendation moving forward. Um, but we'll come back to that piece. So. Bear with me. <laughs> uh, we also have a new E-rate cycle coming up, which is all of our network gear across the district. It deals with the firewalls, which is our main network security component, as well as all of our switches. Um, wireless is also included in here. However, the current wireless.
wireless we have still has two more years on licensing. So my recommendation would be to push out the wireless for two more years. And in doing so, we're able to bring our 20% cost down to $294,421.12. That's a one-time payment. This equipment is locked in with support and maintenance for five years. We do have five years to spend this money. Um, but the equipment that we have now is coming up on five years old in July. So typically we would do it all in one time so then all the warranties and everything expire at the same time. But if you do have the ability to break it up and do half now and half later if you want. Um, I would just like to convey that the federal government through USAC has given us 80% of the overall project. So this really is about 1.4 million. We only have, as a district, we only have to come up with 294. Um, so, uh, everything else that's on here, I feel that could easily be deferred out for another year uh, based on how recently we bought the items and different things like that. Next. Uh, service vehicles. We currently have 19 maintenance vehicles in the department, 59 yellow buses, and three activity buses. We ended up getting one vehicle last year for CTE. It was a um, nice new truck. We got it for CTE. They use it for out of town trips, and when they're not using it, then the maintenance department uses it for day to day operations. That's worked out very well. Um, so I would recommend continuing with that, but as far as this upcoming year, everything that we have is running. There's not a lot of service tickets, things like that. So I don't see any reason to move forward with investing any more this year. Keeping in mind, though, that we haven't bought any yellow buses since 2018-19. So at some point, that investment will make its way back and we'll have to look at that. Um, average student count as far as transportation right now on a normal day is about 3,000. And last I looked, we're about 400 a day. So we still need to get those students back. So does that uh, transportation need start to increase? Then we'll have to, you know, really look at possibly adding newer buses or things like that. But for now, I think district's in a good spot. Thanks. Food service equipment. Obviously, we've made a lot of big investments on that equipment over the years, at least the last few years. Um, working with the food service or um, FSE, we did get a list of items totaling $296,700. Uh, some of those items, um, I've listed them over here based on quantities and they are outlined in your um, budget workbook as well. You can pick and choose depending on, on where the need is and, and what you think. The uh, garbage disposals, obviously, they're looking in pretty rough shape as well as the, the dishwashers. I would consider those probably the two highest issues that we always get calls on. Um, that's why I, formulated the photos there. The uh, kitchen flooring was also a request. That's something that possibly could be done through facilities or uh, the maintenance department at some point if, if deemed necessary. Uh, Walk-in freezer door has also been an issue. But we did go through and outline each one of these items based on the campus um, to give us our total there. Uh, roof repairs. Working with Dr. Rios, we've gone back and forth on, on the, the best way to, to work through this whole project here and after several, I mean several hours. Um, I think we came up with a plan that's very strong. Um, for this current year, we did do Garfield Elementary. That roof has been completed at this point at 438000 um, The current budget that we have still sits at $2,081,220. This is insurance recovery money. So these are all the repairs that need to be done based on the location that total the insurance recovery. So at this point, we are in active uh, negotiations on the contracts for both the TPO routes and the non-TPO routes that went to the board recently. Um, and we're now working with uh, Ms. Johnson to go through the procurement process make the changes based on the immediate needs that we have as far as where's water actively coming in and rains, uh, different things.
things like that. So we're, we're looking more at stopping any potential damage versus the cosmetic aspect, which is still important, but we've had to really reprioritize. I think in total we had well over $4 million of damage. But we have the insurance cap on the TPO for $7 million. So we've just kind of had to work through this and make some very hard decisions. But I, I think this is a very good plan moving forward and the district will be able to uh, get these groups done. Um, but it will take some time. So, um, Project source funding. So on the technology piece, um, I do know today that the virtual environment portion of this, the 300,000 for a lease, or if you did 1.5 and didn't do a lease, that would get you for five years, that is as for funds reimbursable. That, that one is not a problem. Um, I'm still working on a couple more, um, waiting on a couple phone calls to come back in, but it also looks like the, the DRIC portion of another three, just under 300,000, that that too will be covered under ESSER because it's directly going to impact what, what the district's doing for technology and, and curriculum in the upcoming year. So um, I didn't put the E-rate in here yet because I just need to check on a couple more things and the information is changing real fast right now. The food service piece, um, at 286,000, uh, we believe that the Texas Department of Agriculture will cover that through a grant. Uh, the grant right now I believe is around 300,000. So that food service component uh, should not be an issue as well. And then the facilities that would be covered through the insurance recovery, which we've already received those funds. Um, wanted to put them in here and be able to outline so, so you can see the facilities part as a whole, but these are already funded and in motion. Um, the technology one, not so much. That one you can, that's a choice. The roofs, that, that one's in motion, as well as the food services. Um, so I think that concludes the presentation. Questions? Yes, I, I had one in regard to the safeguards. You had started and implemented some, some areas for cybersecurity. Yes. But are there, I, I know you mentioned initially that there would be some additional things brought up year after year. So where are we with that? So, um, it's a very good question. The, uh, the cybersecurity vault is up and running. Uh, we've actually had a couple times where we've had to go there to retrieve backups. That physically is located over at the CTE Center. The, uh, some of the new things that we needed to do with that are covered in the E-rate portion as well as the virtualization because they, they're kind of married in that, in that regard. Uh, the, the overall plan, which I, I'll make sure that everything is laid out and conveyed, you know, for a future project, but the overall plan is to replace the equipment at Annex 1 through the E-Rate project. The equipment that's at Annex 1 will get relocated to CTE. What that will do is if you get another internet connection at CTE, you'll have 100% uptime. You'll never go down. Phones will always work. Internet will always work. It, it's a complete redundant solution, and it's taken us five years to get to this point. Um, and that's really the, the best environment that I think I could ever architect for, for the district. But those are just the remaining components, and that's really we've been waiting on the E-rate cycle to start. Uh, the new one starts in July. Um, so if we proceed with this plan, then we would move that project in July and prep and get it ready. Um, but E-rate cycle, the funding formula changes. Right now and in the past, it's always been so much money per location. Starting July, they give the district one lump sum, and we can use it anywhere in the district. And that's huge, because as we break these programs off at the high school, the high school loses funding. So the high school is always the last campus to get funded with E-rate and we always run out of money before we do needs. So come July with this new cycle, we can get the high school everything they need and then we can disperse it out where it makes sense within the district. So that, that's the biggest thing about E-rate in July. Um, but you will have more than enough equipment to be able to move it around and be able to get it set up 
give 100% uptime on your network. And I, I just can't think of anything that would be more important than that, especially remote learning or anything Dr. Rios can think of in the future technology-wise, infrastructure will support it. I just want to make sure that whatever you initiated, that it would continue. And yeah, of course, you know, we mentioned some training for staff or some fishing exercises. Yeah. And uh, that item will actually be going in a um, board communicated this week, contract under 5,000, because it was that time of year again to do the cybersecurity training. And the last program that we had did really well, so that will be in this week. And then uh, we'll get that initiated next week. So in the next few weeks, you will see that mandatory training again. And then at that point, we could move on doing the, the fishing testing and things like that. The cybersecurity team that we had together has been helping out quite a bit. We have people checking us every day since we had that attack. Anyone else? Okay. We'll, ask the, we'll ask the children just to run us through the workbook so that uh, when we email it tomorrow, they'll have an uh, idea. And of course, any questions that you have, uh, any one of us in cabinet knows that workbook frontwards and backwards so we, we can answer any questions. Um, the, um, I don't know how well that the sound is recording, so at least for the last part, if we can speak up as much as we can so you can capture it, okay? Thank you. Colored, <coughs> um, 
items, those are the ones that if you make changes, <coughs> if you select any changes in the workbook, the changes will show up. And okay. that's why color coded the ones that you, you can change the input to. So if you were to change any of the pay increase, if you were to select another model, that amount would change here. The positions, uh, the health insurance is a set number. We know we're going. We know that's the amount we're recommending to contribute for all of the, the scenarios. And then we have the individual non-salary items. And again, as, just as a reminder, any items that you do change, any of the color-coded items that you do change, we will then be going back and possibly re reducing items in the de departments or operations of their work. And it, just, it will calculate and show you the total expenditures and then um, either a, a deficit or positive balance. And then you can email them to me and we will look, study them and count it and at the next budget workshop, see what updates we have. So we'll save it. Yes, you can say, you'll save it. I'll email it to each of you individually. You can work on it individually, and then, and then if you'll just email it back to me, I'll save them, and then I'll provide Dr. Rios with a recap. We'll all look at them. Okay, questions? Questions. I know I had one. Uh, it said technology to general workers. Yes, yeah, sir. I was going to ask uh, uh, Amy to bring it back up because uh, here there's, there's a there's two things going on right here that probably need more explanation. So, um, of the uh, general maintenance workers, we took two people from uh, the maintenance department and put them in technology because there was just all kinds of uh, help desk phone calls where students were calling in, teachers were calling in, things had to be set up. So Les took two general maintenance workers that he knew could operate and help the technology department, and well, they're there now. And the technology department is running great with them. And then the maintenance department says, hey, I need my people back. The technology says, but it's working so well. So they want two extra people funded. Now maintenance here, they're asking about maintenance supervisors, but this is actually going to be a no, a no cost option because what the maintenance department is, is recommending is that they take all their leads and, and do away with their leads through attrition. So as the lead plumber or the lead carpenter, as, as they're being moved out, all they want is just to have, instead of lead three small department, just have two general maintenance workers that are going to be as supervisors. They'll do two things. One, that will help us supervise the department uh, more closely, and it will give us a chance to promote some kind of upward mobility to people that have been there uh, for a long time and have been doing a good job. But again, these maintenance positions are going to be funded through um, elite positions that, that are going to be eliminated and turned into general maintenance. So that's what that was about. Okay. If there are no questions, Mr. Russell, we still have one item. Okay. Any questions? So I guess we'll close the workshop mm -hmm. and we'll go into the regular special call. Not regular, but special call. And there's only one item, and that's going to be on the pay scale. Or the compensation plan, uh, please go. Um, human resources? Yeah. The, I have put together a, a presentation just to explain why we're doing it. So if it's okay, Mr. Mesa, we'll, we'll uh, ask Adam to review it for us, and then I'll answer any questions that may come up.
summer school counts for this year, after, after COVID, after all the students who were um, online, face-to-face, -face, and so forth. You'll see that elementary student counts right now, they're projecting 739 students in just elementary that would need to attend summer school, and I'll explain the two programs in just a moment. At middle school, we have 543, and that would be 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And at high school, we have 1,514 for the different programs. So when we started looking at these numbers, and we started talking to principals about how many teachers we would need, and we started posting positions, we had many positions. I believe yesterday we still had 30 positions that were not filled. So probably a week ago we had more than that. We have a very short summer period. School ends June 4th, I believe, and we start up again August 2nd. In between there, we needed to serve some students in June and some students in June and July. Now from 9th to 12th grade, we've always serviced June and July. We have the first session in June and the second session. So that was nothing out of the norm. But it was the kinder through eighth grade that, that we were really going to impact with that July program. Again, limited number of teachers applied for summer school positions, limited numbers of paraprofessionals, hourly employees. I know that we were trying to run 12 sites, and cafeteria said, we can't, we don't have the staff. They're not applying. So we've lowered it to 10. Um, bus drivers, aides, so even the support staff was at a limited basis. Then, of course, the ESSER uh, 3 funds came in, and we thought this is an opportunity to rec for administration to recommend some kind of pay increase for teachers. For those who can help us and, and can put in their, you know, their summer, um, I'll show you right now what the cost would be to the district, what, what the difference would be, and it's not as gloomy as it seems because we don't have to offer all the programs as in years past because of SSI. You're going to see how much money we've spent there in years past. So we do have that opportunity. This is very small, and I do apologize. That's the best I could do um, with all that information. But if you look at it, you'll see that on the left side we are running a June program at Calderon. That's just June. Those are just students who possibly are almost there and needed another 18 days of instruction or so. And all they needed was to come back in the last six weeks and some remediation in June, and they're going to be fine. But if you look, that number is 391 students. That's almost 400 students who just need the June program. But then we also have another 270 students who need the June and July. So it's not just enough for them to come in June. That's our elementary programs. So 18 days and 32 days. If they attend, if they do well, there's a good possibility they'll be promoted. But you're going to see our bilingual, we have 125 students that we took out of that population in first through fourth grade, only because we know that they are behind in language. So it's a very targeted program for those students. But you're going to see a June program and a July, June and July at San Felipe Memorial. You're going to see a June and July program at Dover Middle School 7, and a June and July program at Dover Middle School 8. So when you look down here, the 20, in 2018-19, which was the last time that we had a summer school program, it cost us $137,000. And that was at the $28 an hour pay. This year to run programs, it's going to cost us $145,000 for the June. I can only compare June to June because that's all we've ever had in summer. So it's about $8,000 more. Where we're going to see the increase is the 420 students who also need to attend July. So running that July program is going to run us about $150,000 just for July. You'll see um, 12, 16, about what, 22 teachers are going to be needed. You'll see the different costs. The majority is elementary. So you'll see 12 teachers for $99,000 versus four teachers, four teachers, two teachers for July. Okay? 
Then for the for secondary, as I mentioned earlier, secondary is not really a big difference because they're used to it. Nine through twelve grade is used to having a session one and a session two. So you're actually going to see that in 2018, 19, it costs us 405,000 to run our summer programs nine through twelve. But that included fifth grade SSI and eighth grade SSI. I know that's not nine through twelve, but we pay that with state comp money. So because it's not Title I money, it cost us $117,000 just to have those fifth graders and eighth graders test that second time. So that, this fee is a lot higher three years ago, well, in 2019, two years ago, because it, it included SSI. This year we don't have that. Our cost would be $267,000 to run our programs this summer. So actually, it's a big reduction. Now, the principals have done a tremendous job of bringing those students back and working face to face to try to get them just through the June program, just a shorter period of time. So you'll see a 13 day program for EOC. You'll see a credit recovery of 32 days here, 33 day credit recovery, just a 13 day EOC, 33 day credit recovery, 31 day credit recovery. And then we do have some big TSI programs we need the students to be ready for dual credit come on but principals have done a, they've, they've really done a good job because it's seven and a half hours for the teacher but a lot of the sessions are broken up into two hours so I'm a teacher and I can have an 8 to 10 class a 10 to 12 class and a 1 to 3 class so one teacher gets to service 60 students in summer so that's why the cost is also a little bit lower if you take that into account. Um, well, first of all, let me ask, are there any questions on any of the information? That's really just, I'm not going to say justification, but kind of the reasoning as to why we're asking the board, Mr. Nessa. So I, got, I have one. Um, how can we guarantee that these students will be attending? Especially in the elementary, because you know it's been kind of a hectic year for everybody. Wants to be away from the, you know, in the summer. But everybody declaring Fourth of July is going to be it. It's my grandson is saying San Angelo has no more COVID. <laughs> but how can we guarantee uh, the parents or the, and will there be letters saying sending out? Yeah. First of all, Mr. Rosa, there's going to be. Uh, more than letters. It's going to be either direct phone to phone conversation or face to face conversation at the home uh, to make sure everybody understands. But the second point is that retention is a very serious uh, issue that parents and students are going to have to contend with because they're being told, they were already told, if you come back now uh, for the last six weeks, then you only have to do one month of summer school. And they came back. So the ones that are going to come to the first month, they already came back for the first or, or the last six weeks of school, so they're already on board knowing they're going to come. The second group, the one that has to come in June and July, that's going to be a little bit more difficult, and that's where that one-to-one -one conversation is going to have to happen uh, to convince them. Uh, but if they don't come, then we're looking at a high number of students being retained. Uh, and then the other problem with facilities, which you know you never know when yes, will be returning. And I'm glad, first of all, I want to say that when I saw the pay increase, I thought, like, man, this is, like, sent from heaven. Like, you know, we always, the board is always asking, you know, like, especially the summer employees, you know, cafeteria and everybody else. Um, and so this is great to see. And I'm glad the SR30 funds came, you know, finally to be able to provide this for the summer. And the other thing is the learning loss that occurred that I mean, it has to be done so tomorrow morning sure. there's issues with students you know making sure that they come and then finding the staff because teachers are overwhelmed <coughs> as well you know that um, they want to get out for a summer break if there's no other questions Mr. Mendoza I'd like to read the recommendation sure. anyone, anyone else have Board President, members of the 
board, it's a recommendation of the administration and board of trustees approved updates to the 2020-2021 district compensation plan as presented. With the recommendation, is there a motion for approval? Motion made by Mr. Montes, seconded by Ms. Gonzalez. Are those in favor? Motion carries unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you to everybody that presented today. This concludes our meeting. Awesome. Well, this concludes our meeting, and most, most importantly, I think it's a great thing for teachers. And I think this budget, especially with the ESRA funds, leaves us with an interactive worksheet, which can be somewhat creative. Thank you, sir. With that being said, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Okay, motion made by the Amy. Thank you. 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 Thank